I'm John Carter in Moscow. Now in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. I'm John Carter in Petra. Reporting from India. In Colombia. I'm John Carter. Today on the Carter Report, John Carter talks about great balls of fire and the signs of the times. Welcome back. Today we're talking about great balls of fire, a prophecy that talks about the end of the days, the end of times, the return of Jesus Christ. Now, in the first segment, I spoke about the persecution that many Christians are going through. We know that this is true. Hundreds of millions of Christians are being persecuted around the world. I spoke about Islamic terrorism. But I want you to know this. I want to make this very, very plain. There are heaps of Muslims who are the salt of the earth. They're wonderful people. But we're talking about the extremists, the people like ISIS. And many, many Christians have been put to death by groups like ISIS. And Jesus told us about it. And Jesus told us to expect it. That was in the first part of the program. Now we're going to come to sign number four. We've got six great signs today. And sign number four is about, here it is, here it comes, it is the reign of lawlessness. The Bible says that in the last days in America and around the world, people will hate the law of God and also the law of man. There'll be a reign of anarchy and a reign of lawlessness. Now, would you please notice in the Bible, because we, we're reading today from the Bible, I want you to come to Matthew chapter 24 and uh, verse 12, and these are the words of the greatest person who's ever lived, ever walked this earth. That's Jesus Christ. Matthew 24 and verse 12. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. It says lawlessness is going to abound. It's going to be everywhere. It's going to be powerful. There'll be the spirit of the hatred of the law of God and the law of man. There will come anarchy to America. I'm going to tell you some things that are going to be pretty hard to tell you. Maybe this is going to be new to most of you. It's going to be new to most of the people watching on Fox, 3ABN, and around the world. People say, what on earth is going on in the world? I just... I just don't understand what's going on. After you hear this, you will understand. You'll have an inside look. You'll be smart. Listen to this. I'm going to talk now about three great philosophers and teachers whose ideas have permeated the great universities in America, Europe, Australia, Russia, the great universities that have indoctrinated millions of your young people, tens of millions, hundreds of millions around the world. These ideas have produced a state of lawlessness, hopelessness, are anti-Christian and also anti-American. You wonder what's going on? You just listen, you'll find out. This is very controversial, but it's the truth. These philosophies are responsible for the greatest wars in the history of the human race. And the vast number of the suicides in the United States of America. Name them, you say. Well, here it goes. Get ready to take it. Charles Darwin, a brilliant Englishman. A gentleman. He once was a Christian gentleman. He wanted to become a pastor. He wanted to become a Church of England minister. But what people won't tell you today is this. He had a beautiful daughter. He had a beautiful family. And his daughter got sick. And he prayed to God and he said, Please, God, save my daughter. Don't let her die. And when she died, he said, and there can't be any God. So Darwinism came out of the despair of a man whose prayers were not answered. I do not believe Darwinism is scientific. 
Darwinism teaches this, that man is the product of, think this through, time, matter, plus chance. That means that if you leave uh, hydrogen gas alone by itself long enough, it'll become men and women singing and dancing. No, you laugh, of course you do. Time plus matter plus chance. We must differentiate. Now listen to me, my friends, so you don't mess this up. We need to make a difference between micro and macro evolution. All educated people, including this guy, all educated people believe in micro evolution. Not all believe in macro evolution that teaches that man, man came from a simple cell in the ocean. Now, over there you've got micro evolution. It is the tremendous change within the species. Viruses mutate and evolutionists say, this is the proof of Darwinism, neo-Darwinism. This is the proof of evolution. It is the proof of of microevolution. But macroevolution, and young people, you need to know this, and your parents do too. Macroevolution is that man has come down uh, through all of these animals and finally goes back to a single cell in a hot primordial sea. Now, that is Darwinism. Sometimes you can't see uh, the wood for the trees. So let me just put a bit of wood up. This is what it teaches. Nothing produced everything. Non-life produced life. Randomness produced fine-tuning. The fine-tuning in the universe came from randomness. Chaos produced information. Unconsciousness produced consciousness. Non-reason produced reason. I say to you not to offend you, but I say to the scientists who are watching, that is simply the new insanity. You see? As the great pre professor John, the great mathematician from Oxford said to Professor Dawkins, that is wrong. You start with chaos, non-reason. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word. You see, we go back to a great and a mighty mind. Atheistic evolution is the new insanity that is destroying the world. The survival of the fittest. Get rid of that which is weak. Let nature take its course. Now that's taught in every university. The young people are brainwashed with this non-scientific philosophy that came from a man who couldn't deal with the death of his daughter. Number two, perhaps the philosopher who has influenced America more than any other person in the universities is Friedrich Nietzsche. Now, Christians on the whole know nothing about these things. And that is why they... They have an approach towards evangelism which is generally completely wrong. They're answering the wrong questions. Friedrich Nietzsche, the German philosopher who was Hitler's inspiration. He is the most influential philosopher in the great universities in America and around the world. He taught God is dead. Don't misunderstand this. I think he was meaning that God as an idea is dead and that is true as far as most people are concerned. He taught might is right. Christianity is the greatest misfortune of humanity. Pity thwarts the law of natural selection. So he said Christianity was the worst thing the world had ever seen because it keeps alive that which should die. That's why Hitler embraced him and slept with a copy of the Antichrist, his book, under his pillow. He was a passionate hate, hater of Jesus and Christianity because Christianity defends the poor and the weak, and we're proud of it. His Antichrist teachings have destroyed 
the souls of millions. This is why most Christians cannot talk to young people who've come out of universities. They're on two different planets. And the third great philosopher was Karl Marx, the German Jew who gave up faith in God, invented communism and became the rock on which the Soviet Union was built. Now, I know a lot about it. About it. I've seen, uh, been there. I've seen things. Most people today are oblivious to the facts of history because they spend seven hours a day watching garbage on television. Garbage in, garbage out. That's why you can't have an intelligent conversation with most people. And that's why they're so easily deceived. The end result of communism was hopelessness, despair, poverty, the deaths of millions. His teachings are anti-Christian and anti-American. These three philosophers, Darwin, Nietzsche, Marx, got rid of God and the law. Their ideas have permeated our educational system, which is now one of the worst in the industrialized world. Saying that's not true. Yes, it is. Just go and Google it. Why are there so many suicides? A million Americans try to suicide every year. 45,000 succeed. Why? Because the death of hope leads to the hope for death. Can't you see it? Why is drug addiction out of control in America? Why are politics not the answer? Because as I say in Australia, they're barking up the wrong gum tree, looking in the wrong place. Because people are filled with hopelessness and despair. The death of God always leads to the death of man. Now we have the culture wars and all this stuff is poisoning the minds of the American people who spend seven hours or something a day watching the gunk. And today a wave of hatred, anarchy and lawlessness is sweeping America. There is a solution. It's Christ. Christ and the word. And we had a man watching one of our television programs. His name was V. He was an American communist, an atheist. He heard me interviewing my friend Hugh Ross. We were talking about rational reasons to believe. He gave his life to Christ. We baptized him. Today he is a strong Christian. He says, the best thing I'd ever discovered was the truth of Christ in the Bible but we talked to him in language that he could understand. Sign number five, God's truth to the world. Matthew 24, 10 to 14. Please turn to it. Matthew 24. Then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. That's happening today. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. That's happening today. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many or most will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. You got us. Hang in there. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end can, will come and nothing can stop it. Now, what is the gospel? Well, it's not good advice. It doesn't say do, 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 cock a doodle do. The gospel is about God. It's good news that God made us. I'm a child of God. God loves us. You are important. I've told millions of atheists, including the leaders of the KGB, you are not an animal. You are not a machine. You're a child of God, you see. And God in Christ became a man and died in our place for our sins. The gospel is my sins are forgiven and I receive eternal life when I repent of my sins. Nasty word. Some people say, hate that word, repentance. Of course you do because of pride and blindness 
and stupidity. When I repent and accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior, I am saved. That's the good news. The good news is Christ is coming again. And this gospel fire cannot be extinguished. It is spreading around the world. This gospel fire is burning in China. It is burning in Cuba. It is burning in South America and in the United States in spite of the unbelief in the church. In Africa, I've seen it in Africa. I've seen it burning. I'll be over there in Russia just a few weeks running meetings and on television, Russia, Australia, Ukraine and the islands of the sea. You can't put it out. You can try to destroy it. You can try to get rid of God. You can curse him to his face. Try your hardest. You cannot extinguish the mighty fire of God. I have preached in the biggest auditorium in Kiev where Khrushchev stood. I stood at the same lectern where he said, within a generation, the name of Christ will be blotted from the face of the earth. Because we have Nietzsche and Marx and all of these people, he said, the name of Christ will be obliterated. Well, I preached on that very spot to a bigger crowd than he had. I want you to know, Khrushchev is gone. Khrushchev is dead. Khrushchev is kaput, but Christ lives forever. See? So that's one of the greatest signs. I've seen it. I'm not an armchair theologian. I'm not a philosopher. I'm not just a talker. I'm not just a do-gooder. I have seen the glory of the Lord. And one of the biggest tragedies is that many of us are being brainwashed uh, by the media and we're getting ready for the great deception. Sign number six, the great tribulation. Yeah, we're going to get to these balls of fire. Matthew 24, 15 and onwards. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Have you ever read the book of Daniel? I'm told, oh, you can't understand it. That's because people have had their minds destroyed by television. But then there'll be great tribulation such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. Unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the e elect's sake, the elect's sake. But I'm told the elect are in heaven. I'm told they've been raptured home to glory. How far can you get from the Bible? The elector raptured home to glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. No. The elector here on the earth, and for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened because they're living here. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give us light. The stars will fall from the heavens and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And so this great sign uh, is the great tribulation that involves the whole world uh, and the elect. Goodness me. And part of the great tribulation 
dear hearts and gentle people, will be balls of fire. Would you notice Joel in the Bible? Joel means Jehovah is God. Joel, chapter 2, 30 and 31. And I will show wonders in the heavens and on the in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Here is tremendous evidence why you can believe in God. God does not want us to have a blind faith. People say, oh, I just believe, I just believe. That's craziness. I believe on the basis of evidence. And thousands of years ago, the prophet saw in the heavens blood and fire and, look at it, pillars, a pillar, pillars of smoke. The Bible predicted the very conditions that we are seeing in the world today because I want you to know this, Christ is coming. And are you ready, my friend? Are you ready or are you brainwashed? We're going to come to Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Look at these words. The nations were angry like they are now, and your wrath has come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged and that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints, and those who fear your name, small and great, and should us destroy those who destroy the earth. Then the temple of God was opened in heaven, and the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple, and there were lightnings, noises, thunderings, an earthquake, and a great hail. Thousands of years ago, the Bible predicted that men would get the capacity to destroy the earth. The word destroy has a number of possible translations. Pollute. Those who pollute the earth. Those who corrupt the earth. Moral corruption and filth. And destroy as to wipe out, because we have interfered with the balance of nature by filling the atmosphere with carbon. There will be more storms, more hurricanes, more droughts, more heat, more starvation, more disease, and more death. We have reached this era. And in the heavens, blood and fire, those who destroy the earth. This is proof of God. We've come to the last, last era. And the message is plain and simple. All the people watching, the Lord is coming. Are you ready? There are three great events. Number one, creation. God made you. You're not an animal, not a machine. Number two, redemption. Christ died for you. God loved you. He invaded time and space. He died for you. Number three, the second coming of Christ. Christ will return for his children who've been born again. Now, over in Russia 25 years ago, I baptized a young woman. Her name was Olga. She had been down in Ukraine. They marched her village out into the snow. They dug a big hole in the ground and they machine gunned them all to death. Did the Nazis, the God haters. She was able to escape. 
through the providence of God. She got on a train months later, went up to Nizhny Novgorod, where I'm going soon. She got married, married for a few months. Knock on the door one night, and uh, the men of this monster, Stalin was there. So she lived 50 years, no hope, no God, full of despair, no heaven. <laughs> She came to our meetings. She got a Bible and she got Christ. And this beautiful girl who was now an old lady, Olga, she said to me, Spasiba, thank you. All my life for 70 years, I've wondered, what does it mean? But now I know because I have found Christ. My friend, when you find this Christ, and it can happen in a moment, people talk about getting ready. I don't believe that stuff. It's not a case of getting ready. You need to be ready and stay ready. And you can be ready now because of the blood of Jesus. We don't work our way to heaven. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be good to be saved. But you do need to be saved to be good. And when you take Christ into your heart by faith, you are saved. And you are right with God right now. The Antichrist is in the temple of God. I will read you the actual words of the great Roman Catholic Church. More than a billion people pray to the dead. But the Bible talks very plainly about good angels and bad angels. Why on earth were you and I born. This DVD series from John Carter will be yours with a gift of $50 US or $70 Australian. Write to us at the address on the screen. Shipping is free in the US and Australia. Visit carterreport.org, your home for inspirational teaching. For a copy of today's program, please contact us at P.O. Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358. Or in Australia, contact us at P.O. Box 861, Terrigal, New South Wales, 2260. This program is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you. We thank you for your continued support. May God richly bless you.